Hello. Uh, good morning. Is everybody there? Yeah, 1.30. Acha, is pe wo pooch kaan sakte hain? Ye more pe? Ye? Hello, yes. I think you can hear me now. Chalo, thik, aaj to first of all, Lagta hai, there's a, a good news. We'll see what it is. Uh, most likely, uh, colleges khulne ki OHC ki ta se there's a, a positive news. Hopefully, probably 17th August, the Sunray and the date that we're going to start colleges and universities from uh, directly face to face with them have discussion probably better that way rather than like this. So let's hope that it will So I thought uh, uh, sometime one of the university questions which is for Ajate is a man with a lower esophageal adenocarcinoma so he can't swallow anything and everything. So, uh, it's been there for so many months uh, and the patient can't swallow, can't eat anything, he's dehydrated, he's nutritionally very weak, very poor. So before you uh, go for any surgery, it's a projectomy. Up, uh, how do you build the patient up nutritionally? Use to uske uh, uh, hydration ko, uske nutritional level ko, uske low albumins ko, up uh, proteins ko, fats ko, uh, uh, carbohydrates ko. Is tara replenish ka sakte hain before surgery to get him ready for surgery. What are the different routes and what? What are available to build him up? Uh, uh, so strong banana hai. Ki wo operation bhi sahar le aur baad bhi recover bhi ho jaye. So if somebody comes with a lower esophageal tumor with dysphagia, it's for uh, uh, a dysphagia for solids as well as liquids. And you confirm that with the endoscopy, gastroscopy, and take a biopsy, and the diagnosis comes back as adenocarcinoma of the lower third of the esophagus, which is the commonest one uh, of the esophageal cancers. So when you, you plan to build him up, you are planning to do an Ivor Lewis kind of uh, uh, esophagectomy or transhiatal esophagectomy. So what are you going to do? How are you going to build him up nutritionally? So you dietitian to refer to dietitian. So what are different supports available? One is the peripheral feeding with the help of parental nutrition. You can give that parental nutrition to uh, a central line, or you can use uh, a pick line. Pick line is peripherally introduced a central catheterization. So, what is the Maybe I'll the pick line or ये तो हो गया ना एक तो पेरिफेरल वेन से आप फ्लूइड भी दे सकते हैं आ, लेकिन आप फैट्स और बाकी चीजें जो है वो पेरिफेरल लाइन में नहीं दे सकते वो थ्रोम्बोफ्लेबाइटिस हो जाता है वेन्स का तो उसके लिए आपको लंबा कैथेटर चाहिए टू पास दैट कैथेटर इनटू द सेंट्रल लाइन एंड यू कैन गिव वो जो लॉन्ग कैथेटर है उसको कहते हैं आ, आ, Pick line, okay. If you look at this, the arm say vein can the long catheter 
and it goes right in inside the uh, right side of the superior vena cava or wahan jaake jo hai na ye catheter tip hai or you can you can give uh, fats and total parenteral nutrition uh, for a longer time okay uh, so teen hafte tak de sakte hain then you have to sometime uh, remove it replace it or dobara karne padte so this is peripherally introduced central catheter ye aap us taraf se the other thing is this one this is uh, a gastrostomy catheter ye uh, abdomen mein uh, ye stomach ke andar aap tube dal dete hain kyunki patient can't swallow so the first thing available is stomach उससे ऊपर ओरली पेशेंट लेगा या वो कुछ खाए पिएगा तो वो नीचे जाएगा ही नहीं बिकॉज ऑफ दिस पेज या तो लोअर थर्ड में बंद है बिकॉज ऑफ ट्यूमर ओके तो व्हाट यू नीड टू डू पास ट्यूब इट्स लाइक दिस ट्यूब इज लाइक अ फोलीज कैथेटर इसके अंदर बलून है स्टमक के अंदर डाल के बलून को इन्फ्लेट कर देते हैं और इसको फिक्स कर देते हैं दिस इज कॉल्ड गैस्ट्रोस्टमी You make a hole in the stomach, ठीक है और उसके अंदर से ये कैसेटर डाल देते हैं तो आप इस ट्यूब के थ्रू जो भी है न्यूट्रिशनली वैल्यू है जिस चीज लिक्विड्स की आप मिल्क दे सकते हैं आप एनश्योर दे सकते हैं आप और जो कुछ भी दे यखनी दे सकते हैं इस तरह की चीज़ें लिक्विड वगैरह दे सकते हैं इट गो स्ट्रेट इन टू दी Into the stomach. So, this way you build it. Because the absorption, so you have all the intestines, you know, small intestines. So, here you can see that the patient for one or two months, you give this kind of thing and build the patient. After building, you can take it and take it away. Okay? So, you can build the patient up. So, peripherally, this is the peripheral side. Okay? So, you can build the patient up. So, peripherally, this is the peripheral side. Okay? So, you can build the patient up. और यू कैन गिव एंट्रल न्यूट्रिशन एंट्रल का मतलब ये है या तो आप गैस्ट्रोस्टमी कर दें ये इसको पैग कहते हैं अच्छा अब ये तो एक ओपन गैस्ट्रोस्टमी की पिक्चर मैंने दिखाई है पैग जो है पैग इस तरह है मैं दोबारा आपको पिक्चर दिखाता हूँ दिस इज गैस्ट्रोस्टमी ओके पैग इज दिस इज कॉल्ड पर्कटेनियस एंडोस्कोपिक गैस्ट्रोस्टमी वो पैग जो है कोटेनियस एंडोस्कोपिक गैस्ट्रोस्टमी उसमें ये होता है कि आप एंडोस्कोप डाल के एंड वो एंडोस्कोप जब स्टमक पे चली जाती है तो लाइट होती है ना तो वो उसकी टिप टूवर्ड्स दी एंटीरियर वॉल दी एबडमन की तरफ टिप उसकी मूव करेंगे लाइट शो करेगी तो ये एपगैस्ट्रियम में आपको लाइट नजर आएगी स्किन के थ्रू तो मेक अ लिटिल कट ओवर दैट लाइट और उसके थ्रू आप थोड़ा सा खोलते जाते हैं स्टमक में स्टमक को इन्फ्लेट कर देते हैं ताकि एयर डिस्टेंड हो जाए और वो स्किन के क्लोज आ जाता है स्टमक में छोटा सा होल करके तो उसके अंदर आप गैस्ट्रोस्टमी डाल देते हैं This is called percutaneous endoscopic. This is because with the help of endoscope, you can give it. So, with this, you can nutritionally give the patient all the things. Now, the next is blood spots. If it's a gastric tumor, it doesn't have any benefit in the stomach. So, then in that case, you can make a jejunostomy. So, 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 you can make a उसमें छोटा सा होल करते हैं और उसके अंदर ट्यूब डाल देते हैं और दूसरा एंड ट्यूब से डॉमो से बाहर ले आते हैं और उसमें सारे न्यूट्रिशनल सपोर्ट आप थ्रू जेजोनास्टमी देते हैं तो ये जो सारी चीज़ें मैं बता रहा हूँ दीज आर टू बिल्ड द पेशेंट आप पेशेंट का ओरल रूट इज नॉट अवेलेबल बिकॉज ट्यूमर ऑबस्ट्रक्टिंग तो आप या प्रेफरली दे सकते हैं फ्रंटल न्यूट्रिशन दे सकते हैं और यू कैन डू अ गैस्ट्रोस्टमी या बहुत बारीक ट्यूब फीडिंग भी होती है ओरल तो वन मिलीमीटर ट्यूब होती है वेरी फाइन ट्यूब 
जो आप उसमें डालते हैं नोज के थ्रू इन टू दस और निगोशिएट करके वो ट्यूबर के थ्रू अंदर तक ले जाते हैं इन दस्टम अगर वो पॉसिबल है तो उसके थ्रू भी ट्यूब फीडिंग की जा सकती है नहीं अगर वो ट्यूब नहीं जाती टोटली टोटली ऑब्स्ट्रक्शन है इस ऑफिस में तो यू डू अ गैस्ट्रोस्टमी ओपन गैस्ट्रोस्टमी और पैग पर कुटेनियस एंडोस्कोपिक गैस्ट्रोस्टमी जैसे मैंने आपको पहले बताया कि एंडोस्कोप डाल के लाइट शो करके जैसे कभी कर लाइट नजर आ रही है एंटीर डॉमल पे डिस्टेंडेड से मांग छोटा सा वो करके यहाँ पैग का आपको पूरा सेट मिल जाता है लोकल एनेस्थीजिया दे के स्टमक के ऊपर तो आप उसमें ट्यूब डाल देते हैं एंड यू कैन फ्रीज द पेशेंट इफ द स्टमक इज नॉट अवेलेबल देन यू कैन पास द ट्यूब इन द जैजुल फॉर अ फीडिंग परपस दैट्स कॉल्ड जैजुलोस्टमी फीडिंग जैजुलोस्टमी ओके फॉर फीडिंग परपस सिमिलरली फीडिंग गैस्ट्रोस्टमी ट्यूब गैस्ट्रोस्टमी और पैग ओके अच्छा अब ये के so these are the different uh, supports uh, artificially nutritional support to different methods that this office uh dusra aa jata hai ke uh what are the complications of these kind of things jo bhi aap de rahe hain enterly de rahe hain to usme kya kya problem kya ho sakti hai jo bhi aap tube ya to wo tube related ho sakti hain ya gi mein problem ki wajah se skin ki wajah se ya metabolic effects ki wajah se हो सकते हैं या इनफेक्टिव तो अगर वो पूछते हैं कि व्हाट आर दी कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ऑफ दिस एंटर न्यूट्रिशन एंट्रोम जो जीआई में आप न्यूट्रिशन दे रहे हैं थ्रू द गैस्ट्रोस्टमी ट्यूब और पैग और थ्रू गैस्ट्रोस्टमी उसमें क्या प्रॉब्लम्स क्या हो सकती है कॉम्प्लिकेशंस उसमें मेल पोजीशन हो सकती है गलत आपने ट्यूब डालने की कोशिश की स्टमक में लेकिन वो बाहर रह गई है या वो ट्यूब बाहर निकल आई या डिस्प्लेसमेंट हो गई या दैट दैट ट्यूब इज ब्लॉक सो यू नीड टू रिप्लेस इट और या ट्यूब अंदर वो ब्रेक हो गई है और देयर इज सम लीकेज अराउंड द ट्यूब एंड सम टाइम जिस जगह से ट्यूब आपने बाहर निकाली हुई है स्किन एंड म्यूकोजल अल्सरेशन हो गई है वहां पे और जो भी आपने हाइपरटोनिक आप सॉल्यूशन दे रहे हैं तो जी में जाके वो डायरिया कर सकता है ब्लोटिंग कर सकता है वॉमिटिंग कर सकता है कैन गिव अपडामिनल क्रैम्प्स पेन भी हो सकती है एंड समाइम वो ज़्यादा भर जाए तो इट कैन थोड़ा सा लिक्विड ऊपर आके तो एस्पिरेट भी पेशेंट कर सकता है बिकॉज यूजली एल्टरली पीपल ओके एंड एस्परेशन निमोनिया इज अ वेरी सीरियस कॉम्प्लिकेशन ओके समाइम कॉम्प्लिकेशन आई होती है Uh, the metabolic complications can be from uh, electrolyte imbalance you know, deficiency of minerals trace elements and vitamins so jab bhi aap ye gastrostomy pag ya jejunostomy wala the you got to make sure the patient's electrolytes are uh, stable normal and there is no deficiency of the minerals we add kar de usme to trace elements hain जिंक वगैरह और ये कॉपर और ये मिलेटिजम ये सारा ऐड करते हैं वाइटमिन जरूर दें ए डी एन के फैट सॉलेबल विटामिन एंड बी बी कॉम्प्लेक्स इन्फेक्टिव कॉम्प्लिकेशन हो सकती हैं कुछ भी फ्रॉम द आउटसाइड वे यू गिविंग द फीड और कुछ भी एंडोजिनस फ्राम इन साइड नोसोफॉमियो इन्फेक्शन कैन बी देर तो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक और अक्सर लोग को इतना ज़्यादा पता नहीं होता कि और सवाल ऐसा आ जाता है कि एक पेशेंट है उसको आपने बिल्ड करना है अब ऑपरेशन के बारे में किसी ने पूछा उसकी डिटेल नहीं पूछ रहे उन्होंने कहा आपने उसको प्रिपेयर करना है बींग हाउस ऑफिसर कि इज दिस पेशेंट मेक इम स्ट्रॉगर बिफोर सर्जरी उसको न्यूट्रिशनली इस तरह बिल्ड करें फ्लूड इलेक्ट्रोलाइट्स और न्यूट्रिशनली उसको बेहतर करें सो दैट ही कैन अंडर गो एन ऑपरेशन अदरवाइज अनिस्तरी कहेगा ये कि हड्डियों का ढांचा ले आए आप इसको तो ऑपरेट किया एनस्थीजिया दिया वो वूड ही नहील करेगा 
So you have to build the patient up first so, and try to reduce the complications. Okay. So all these things, peripherally as well as enterally. Enterally means through a GIT. You can give the patient feeding. All right. Up here to it separate seeds there. Okay. The other thing comes, the other tumor in the colon, which is the third commonest tumor uh, in male as well as in females. The colonic cancer. The colonic cancer uh, uh, affects scarcity. If it's a right-sided cancer of the colon, that means sequum ascending colon, well, they usually present like a mass, painless mass in the right alia fossa. It's to offer a pendicular mass and differentiate the algorithm. And sometimes you have to do colonoscopy or barium anima to differentiate between an appendicular mass and a carcinoma of the uh, a sequence. So the scenario usually about this is that the patient of uh, 50 years old uh, comes to you uh, with a mass in the right eyelid fossa, which is uh, a pain less, and the patient presents with iron deficiency anemia. If there is a pendicular mass, it is less likely to have a, uh, iron deficiency anemia. And the most characteristic feature of a right-sided tumors are diarrhea. If they mention about diarrhea as well, so suddenly uh, the bell starts ringing of oh, diarrhea, iron deficiency anemia, 50-year-old, and a mass. It could be a tumor, it's a carcinoma of the cecum, okay? And you need to do uh, surgery, right hemicolectomy rather than appendicectomy. Okay, if you are in doubt, confirm the diagnosis before, do a colonoscopy and biopsy. Colonoscopy means passing a tube from the uh, rectum to, to the all the way to the colon and take a biopsy from in, inside the tumor in the cecum and confirm that histologically before doing any surgery. You can also do a contrast enhanced CT or CT MRI to actually find out the uh, metastasis and the status of the liver as well before doing surgery for some people do MRI. Magnetic resonance imaging. Okay, so that's the uh, primary cancer effects of a colon. Now that's on the right side. You do a right hemicolectomy. Part of the terminal ileum, cecum, ascending colon, and up up to nearly half of the colon, transverse colon, are taken out, and ileo transverse anastomosis is done. Okay. Right now, if the tumor is in the descending colon, now what we're going to do? The patient will present as bleeding PR, okay? Bleeding PR, patient can have a, a change in the bowel habits, constipation, alternating with diarrhea, sometimes mucus, and sometimes if it perforates, it can cause peritonitis and proximal uh, distension. If you do an x-ray, it will be all distended uh, colon proximally because it causes obstruction. And this was all the stents. You can do left hemicolectomy. Okay. You remove half of the transverse colon, uh, splenic flexure, as well as the descending colon, and do end to end anastomosis. The transverse colon, bring it down to sigmoid and anastomosis. You remove that. Bit. So this was right hemicolectomy. Now this is left hemicolectomy. And you also remove the lymph node around the area. When we come to that, we'll talk about it. That you also not only remove the colon with the tumor, but you also do lymphadenectomy, removal of the draining lymph node. Okay. Now, there we go. These are the effects that 
is a diary on this side is altered uh, bowel habits and blood loss bleeding pia what are the other causes of bleeding pia well similar uh, other patient uh, bleeding pr ke sath aata hai middle aged patient uh, so the commonest causes are usually uh, piles hemorrhoids uh, a fissure in a fissure which is a tear and there is some blood uh, on the toilet paper or in the in the toilet and what other causes are the diverticular disease okay if the patient has multiple diverticular here and any uh, inflammation causes some bleeding so that comes so bleeding pr hemorrhoids and a fissure uh, it could be a uh, a diverticular disease it could be rectal tumors or a, a sigmoid tumor rectal tumor sigmoid tumor and the tumor there the descending colon all can cause bleeding or if they are at sigmoid if they are multiple diverticular sigmoid colon is the commonest area where you have the diverticular disease commonest is region of colon they have uh, multiple sigmoid diverticular and they can cause uh, diverticulitis and bleeding pr so then what are the other causes of bleeding pr inflammatory bowel disease ulcerative colitis crohn disease they all can cause bleeding pr there is one condition i would like you people to remember that sometime on the right side of the colon there are uh, uh, angiodysplasias this is called angiodysplasia angiodysplasia they are the new vessel formations in the mucosa and submucosa of the colon usually the right side of the colon and they bleed and you display the us and you have to do some kind of uh, selective arteriography to see the area where it's bleeding you have to deal with accordingly so these are mu- mucosal or submucosal uh, malformation usually venous malformations uh, which cause uh, bleeding they are called angiodysplasias uh the usually in the elderly, elderly people where there are vascular degenerative changes are going on and it can cause angiodysplasia and bleeding uh, in the colon and the patient presents as bleeding pr okay right so these are the <clears throat> uh effects of a primary tumor in the descending colon now if the patient has a rectal tumor now patient har waqt feel karega ki he has not completely emptied uh, his bowel his rectum so usko kehte hain feeling hoti rehti har waqt ke there is something there you want to go to the toilet but is actually not feces it is actually the tumor is called tenesmus you you feel that there is uh, incomplete evacuation ya aapne puri tarah se apne bowel empty nahi kiya so this is called tenesmus okay and can be bleeding of course and uh, sometimes mucus sometimes or of uh, constipation sometimes diarrhea and sometimes hypokalemia because of mucus discharge containing a lot of potassium is wasted in the mucus patient can present with hypokalemia and sometimes local rectal pain due to infiltration is the piche sacrum or the sacrum infiltrate which is the sacrum neural plexus it can cause sacral pain in the back so these are the uh, effects local effects of the primary tumor in different regions now sometimes there is there are metastases for example this uh, through the mesentery all lymph nodes they 
cause uh, obstruction at the porta hepatis before going into the liver. So you can, at porta hepatis, these enlarged lymph nodes can press on the hepatic duct so, and the patient presents to you with the obstructive jaundice. <clears throat> node compression of the porta hepatis because of metastatic lymph node which can present with jaundice, okay? Or sometimes the retroperitoneal spread and can cause obstruction of the ureter. Which is a retroperitoneum ureter are as a bladder it can cause uh, obstruction of the urinary flow in the ureter, ureteric obstruction, hydrourter, as well as hydronephrosis. So you understand that there is a tumor which is blocking at the lower end of the ureter and proximally the ureter is dilated and the kidney is dilated as well. So uh, these are the effects and if you have the uh, metastasis, multiple metastasis in the liver because of this tumor, you can have systemic effects of anorexia, weight loss, malaise, and all because of this uh, metastatic spread. So you should know what are the uh, local effects of the primary tumor, what can be in transit lymph node compression causing obstruction and ureter obstruction, and when they Reach to the liver, it causes systemic effect in the body. Okay, at different stages. All right. Now, the next thing is what is the epidemiology? Is the third commonest uh, cancer is a colon cancer in both male as well as females, and it accounts for about 11 percent of all the cancer deaths. Well. In about 130,200 cases of colon rectum in year 2000 in the world, and the lifetime risk is about 6%. And uh, uh, it's rare before the age of 40 for a rapid increase at 50 and so on. So mostly you have oh, uh, 37% present when the tumor is still localized. regional, region with some lymph nodes involvement. So very few they present metastatic spread to the uh, regional lymph nodes as well as uh, to the liver. Uh, so one to five year survival is about eighty percent good survival rate, and overall the survival is about sixty one percent. Uh, well, the risk factors, yeah, family history, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, as you all know, uh, ulcerative colitis may have uh, for a long period of time, patient history long, uh, 15, 20 years of school, uh, ulcerative colitis uh, more likely to develop uh, colonic cancer. Yeah, 10 to 20 percent cases, Crohn's disease may be cancer with the familiar adenomatous polyposis or the polyps and those chances that out their family history has those many chances that out there. are non-hereditary uh, familial uh, colonic cancers be with the non-hereditary uh, non-polypidal Polyps, uh, Kibagaya, P cancer, Poyate. 75% are sporadic. Sporadic means family history as a clinical what are the risk factors? Yeah, it's the, uh, risk factors are uh, animal fat or red meat or cholesterol, 
और फोलेट इसको प्रोटेक्ट करती है डेफिशेंसी अगर फोलेट की वजह से ज्यादातर चांसेस हैं क्रॉस म्यूटेशन हो जाती है कैल्शियम सप्लीमेंटेशन अगर आप देते हैं तो नए एडिनोमाज नहीं बनते और उससे आगे वो ट्यूमर नहीं बनते फाइबर कहते हैं कि फाइबर लें तो बड़ा अच्छा है बट वो एक्सपेरिमेंटली इसको प्रूव नहीं किया जा सका कि ये इसकी कोई प्रोटेक्शन है कैंसर का तो ऐसे ही रोज बीटा बैक्स ना खाए तो ऐसा का मसला नहीं जस्ट गिव द अबाउट ही स्टू फिर यह कि वोट इज द अदर कॉज इज रिग्रेशन पॉलिप क्या हो सकता है कहते हैं एच आर टी है हार्मोन रिप्लेसमेंट थेरेपी ए एस ए है रॉयल कॉक्स टू जो है वो कहते हैं ये प्रोटेक्ट करते हैं आगे पॉलिप्स है वो रिग्रेशन करने का तो ये अगर है बेहतर कहते हैं एल्कोहल कंजम्पन ऑल्सो इंक्रीज तो अवॉइड द रेड मीट एनिमल फैट रिच एंड कोलेस्ट्रॉल एंड एल्कोहल एंड ट्राई टू गिव पेशेंट फोलेट्स एंड कैल्शियम and some some kind of a, a balanced diet with some fibers in it okay <coughs> polyps are the uh, they start with polyps uh, the most cancer they, they arise from that different types of polyps are there adenomatous polyps and there's polyp uh, initially benign but later can turn into malignancy नॉन नियोप्लास्टिक पॉलिप्स भी होते हैं हाइपोप्लास्टिक मिक्रोजन इन्फ्लामेटरी हमार्टोमेटस पॉलिप्स जो एडिनोमेटस पॉलिप्स हैं दिन थर्टी थ्री परसेंट केस बाई दी एज ऑफ फिफ्टी एंड फिफ्टी परसेंट बाई दी एज ऑफ सेवेंटी इन पेशेंट कैंसर मोस्ट ऑफ दीज पॉलिप्स आर लेस देन वन सेंटीमीटर यूजली सिंगल the can be multiple okay? and cancers can develop in 35% if you don't treat now, what are these polyps what do they look like now this is at a uh, uh, colonoscopy you see this is a polyp and it can be pedunculated jab ke iski piche stalk ki dandi saath lagi hoti hai and they can be sessile without any pedicle okay Or they can be tubular, tubular villus, but usually the uh, uh, tubular, which are the commonest ones, uh, like the uh, whole colon tubes. Yeah, many of these villus, the bile, these are villus. Many of them. Or be also the dysplasias, different degrees of dysplasia, polyps, many of them. And uh, also, uh, uh, can be poor differentiation, lymphovascular invasion of these polyps, and zero uh, to four level of invasion of the polyps can be. So, how do you treat it? If you uh, can find a polyp on a barium or endoscopy, so you see endoscope, so you use a snare, snare के साथ उसको burn करके तो उसको आप remove कर सकते हैं. और एक दफा जब हो जाए उनको पॉलिप को आपको दोबारा एंडोस्कोपी करने पड़ेगी उसको कीप द पेशेंट अंडर चेक कीप एन आई ऑन द पेशेंट कोल ऑन सर्वेलेंस आप उसको बाद में देखते रहते हैं हर तीन साल के बाद आपने स्कोप डाल के देखना है कि जिस पॉलिप रिमूव किया है वो दोबारा उस जगह पर तो नहीं हो गया या उसके साथ कोई और तो डेवलप नहीं हो और उसकी बात भी करें सर्जरी अगर वो पॉलीपैक्टमी आप पॉलिप रिमूव नहीं कर सकते और बड़ा है और सेसाइल है प्रडंकुलेटेड नहीं है तो आप उसकी सर्जरी कर सकते हैं इसी तरह वो मैंने जैसे कहा था कि डिफरेंट हेरिट्री पॉलीपोस सिंड्रोम्स हैं फैमिलियल एडिनोमेटस पॉलीप्रोसेस कोलाई वो हैं कैंसर डेवलपिंग ऑल बाय द एज ऑफ 50 देयर आर सम ओके हेरिटरी केसेस में और लिंच 1 एंड 
or different syndromes associated with that. Mein aur chizo, aur organs ki bhi involvement hoti hai, endometrium, ovary, stomach, small bowel, large bowel. There's 85% risk of uh, colonic cancer, usually the right side is one inherited pre and non polyposis syndrome. When the polyp is near, it can go uh, develop process there. You know. so there are, as I said, inflammatory bowel disease, maybe colonic cancer, but something. Okay. Uh, those are ulcerative may, but even in Crohn's disease, we do have 10 to 20 percent uh, increase in developing cancer. Okay. Now, uh, <clears throat> secondary primary colonic cancer is three times more likely to develop in a patient with a colonic cancer. If you have an operation, a patient who treats the colonic cancer, so it's not that it's finished. It's not that it's finished. Second primary tumor is finished. It's not that it's finished. It's not that it's finished. It's not that it's finished. Or it could be metaphysical lesion. If you have a left-sided colon tumor, you treat it. So you have a right-sided colon tumor. It's not that it's finished. It's not that it's finished. It's not that it's finished. history of first degree <coughs> relatives. Over as we have chronic cancer, other first degree relatives who have or chances are might uh, have higher risk of uh, developing a cancer. Okay. Yeah, more than one relatives are affected, the risk of course higher. Or the younger the relative develop this cancer, the risk is high. Now, how, how you can screen it, okay? Uh, screening ka matlab to keep an eye. When itna zyada jab common ho, kisi uh, England mein to kaafi zyada hai, and they routinely uh, send to us ko, post mein sample, uh, post mein mortal a jati hai, saath mein stick a jati hai, sara kuch a jata hai. Aap usko, and everybody is above 50, उसको वो पोस्ट में आ जाता है आपको अपना फीकल उकल ब्लड चेक कराने के लिए थोड़ा सा सैंपल और डाल के उसमें बॉटल में तो आपको पोस्ट कर देते हैं जो लैब में चले जाता है एंड चेक इट ओके तो फीकल उकल ब्लड जो है ना वो स्क्रीनिंग के लिए इस वेरी गुड टू यू कैन डू अ फ्लेक्सिबल कॉलोनोस्कोपी � uh, as well, if you are suspecting the high risk, and if the fecal cult blood is positive, okay. Screening. Uh, CEA has no role in screening. Carcino embryonic antigen. Ye is ka role going in screening many, but if uh, you know this is a tumor, you treated the patient, you remove the tumor, they can bath me surveillance ke liye, follow up ke liye. CEA jo hai, uski importance hai. Your operation ke saal ke baad aapne karwaya hai si, CEA aur uh, uska uh, level bada high aaya hai. That means patient has a recurrence of tumor. Okay, so importance of CEA and these tumor markers is to keep an eye on the recurrence. Okay. Now, this investigation for varium anima, pass a, uh, a varium emulsion through the rectum. And you can see this, this is all this big tumor. Okay. That if you tumor, the medium is hardly passing through the proximal colon. So this is a, uh, that's the rectum. And right at the, is sigmoid tumor. Okay, so you do sigmoid collection. Age more than 50, patient uh, age is asymptomatic, which is the average risk. 
अगर फीकल कल्ड ब्लड ये अभी आप करते हैं और हमने स्कोप किया है ने पॉजिटिव फ्लैक्सीबल सर्वेलेंस करनी पड़ेगी बार बार चेक करना पड़ेगा and there are different kinds of uh, uh, morphological uh, pictures of this tumor it could be ulcerative ke andar colon mein ulcer bana hua hai is prominent thing exophytic as a bile ki taraf polypoidal permeating tumor hoga it could be annular all around it annular ban gaya uh, and uh, classical apple core agar aap apple kha ke center mein uska jo chhod de to apple core ho gaya okay the picture of the very animal will be like an apple core it could be mucosa theek hota hai lekin andar hi andar infiltrative hoti hai usko kehte hain linitis uh, plastica type okay it can happen in stomach can happen in the colon as well okay and uh, you can grade uh, system 1 to 3 most Uh, develop to these differentiated uh, glandular structures at different grades grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 we'll come to that first of all let's see what is the uh, <coughs> uh, how do you classify it uh, with the uh, different aston gollier classification or uh, duke's classification okay a b c d So first of all, we should know uh, the different uh, walls. If we look at the colon of the wall, we see that the colon is from here to here. We cut it here and cut it. We see that it starts from the inside. What is the inside? The inside is from the inside. 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 You have several so muscles. क्या है? Circular muscles हैं और longitudinal muscles. ये circular muscles हैं और साथ में ये longitudinal muscles. Okay. And then the serosa, the outside. Okay. That is the serosa. Okay. Mucosa inside. Okay. Some mucosa. Then you have these muscle layer and you have the serosa outside, the serous layer. Okay. So these are the the wall of the colon. Now what happens next? The next is uh, if you just uh, split it, cut it open to see uh, the different uh, areas uh, from mucosa, or some mucosa, muscularis, and serosa. Okay, so the, uh, region of the colon. Same picture. Now, how do you stage the tumor? Some size stage A, B, 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 C, B, and D. Okay. The rectal tumor is this one. A Duke's classification. So, if we look at A, B, C, D, if we look at just Aston Collier, we see that stage A is that if we go up to sub mucosa, that is called. That means और सब ट्यूमर है मस्कुलरिस और सिरोजा पिन नहीं गया अगर मस्कुलरिस में चला गया है तो ये बी वन हो गया अगर वो मस्कुलरिस से आगे सिरोजा में भी चला गया है तो बी टू हो गया अगर वो आउटसाइड सिरोजा और बाहर के ऑर्गन इन्वॉल्व हो गए तो ये बी थ्री साइड पे चला गया अच्छा C1 मस्कुलरिस तक है लेकिन लिम्फ नोड भी है अगर B2 है और साथ में इसके लिम्फ नोड है तो ये C2 हो गया तो B2 C2 C3 अगर ये 
बी थ्री है एडजस्टेंट ऑर्गन भी हैं और लिम्फ नोड भी हैं तो ये सी थ्री हो गया और डी इज दिस्टेंट मिटास अगर लिवर में मिटास चले गए तो इट्स फेजिंग इज डी ब्यूक्स जो है वो ए बी सी बताता है ब्यूक्स क्लासिफिकेशन ये के अप टू दी सब निकलता और वो ए है अगर अप टू सिरोजा तक है तो ये बी है और इफ इज गॉन बियॉन्ड सिरोजा इन टू दियर जस्ट ऑर्गन तो ये सी है इट डज नॉट क्वालिफाई फॉर द लिम्फ नोड लेकिन अगर डिस्टेंट टेस्ट लोग हैं तो डी है Dukes himself didn't describe uh, stage D distant metastasis. Was not called A B C power. Okay. Now T N M staging. There are T one, T two, T three, T four. The mucosa muscularis serosa or outside nodes N one, one to three, two to four. The central lymph node M not is no metastasis. M not distant metastasis. All right. Now this we are coming to the uh, uh, different stages. Now this is the T1 tumor. Okay, it's just starting at the mucosa. All right, the tumor is just there. It hasn't gone through the muscularis or uh, serosa, which is the peritoneum. Okay. Covered by the peritoneum. All right. Now next is T2. As you can see, it's gone right up to the muscularis. Okay, this T2, T3, it's gone beyond the muscularis into the serosa. It's gone outside the serosa into the adjacent structures. Now, the patient has symptoms, as I mentioned earlier on. Uh, so, just to recap, usually a blood in the stool, we can correct them. Patient very quickly present to you because if someone sees that there is a lot of blood, then they talk to the doctor. So, uh, blood in the stool is a good thing in another way. The patient come to the doctor early, and to catch the disease early. Can treat the patient with a good prognosis. Okay, prognosis is good. That you can get this covered. Change in bowel habits also can be constipation. Or something. You you try to pass the, the stool, pass the motion, but there's a tumor there which is blocking it. You have to stra strain a lot. Uh, constipation may appear. Sometimes when the constipation is difficult, there's a bulky piece. So there are a lot of diarrhea. और टेनिसमस भी हो सकती है इससे भी हमारे दौर डाउन अब्डामिनल डिस्टेंपर्ट होते रहते हैं ना फ्रीक्वेंट अब्डामिनल पेन गैस भी अंदर है और ब्लोटिंग भी हो सकती है वेट लॉस आये रहे इफ देर आर एडवांस्टेज डेस्टिसेस या ये वेट लॉस को नो रीजन भी है कि डेस्टिसेस नहीं हुए लेकिन पेशेंट ब Highly rise number of people can be weight loss without any reason. Or uh, constant fatigue is another thing. Patient feel lethargic, better where I'm. Uh, doesn't want to do anything because he's feeling unwell. <clears throat> These are uh, clinical presentations, different presentations, bleeding, change bowel habit, weight loss. Uh, sometimes the right upper quadrant pain, uh, right upper quadrant pain, too, or the uh, right side it pain, too, or the because everything, the back pressure, which are was all on side, is all out there, or because there is no return valve at the RUC junction, vascular gas is not there, vascular is not there, and all is on the right side. Pe Uh, perforation should be there, or uh, obstruction. Right side pe obstruction is needed. Left side the colon pe obstruction is other. Okay. 
Now there's a picture showing you how does the liver looks like with the mats. White is the dark brown liver. So this is metastasis. It's a tumor metastasis. White or hard suffi yoga. Okay. So that's what it looks like. And uh, this is uh, what the colonic cancer on endoscopy. They can do this polypidal head or a sara tumor head on the colon cancer head endoscopy. Right. Then comes how do you diagnose it? You pass a scope uh, and then go back to see you. Okay. Uh, the other thing can be just x-ray, uh, routine bloods, uh, can be smaller P, C, D, C. You can do pre-op CT scan or MRI or contrast enhanced CT or uh, uh, some, get, some get it if the abnormal LFTs, that will liver metastasis. Uh, and other you get the large bulky tumor to see by the other organs, the tumor grab side to the say organs involved, the uterus to the involved, but the ureters to the involved with the or adjacent organs and duodenum to the involved with the Ten percent of max are missed with preoperative and operative evaluations. Uh, okay. So intraoperative ultrasound scan jo hai na wo kehte hain operate kiya hua hai khola hua hai to uske sath ultrasound andar wo probe hoti hai usme saath laga ke dekh le ke yahan pe ultrasound ek picture aa jati hai ye metastasis yahan pe hai normally ultrasound waise karte hain upar skin se jab aap ne khola hua hai to you can use that probe inside and that can give you a better idea अच्छा एक और चीज एक तो नजर आ गया था ना हमें वाइट सा वो लिवर में टेस्टिस जब ये के स्मॉल टेस्टिस वो जो नजर ही नहीं आते 15 टू 20 परसेंट ऑफ लिवर में टेस्टिस दे आर नॉट पैल्पेबल आप फील करते हैं कुछ नहीं लगेंगे तो सीटी स्कैन में आ गई और तो साउंड इफ यू आर लकी तो प्री ऑपरेटिव सीईए रिफ्लेक्स प्रोग्नोसिस आप करके देख लेते हैं अगर बहुत ज्यादा है तो इसका मतलब ये है कि Advanced है, थोड़ा कम है। The CA may not be elevated in poorly differentiated. So CA is not a, a good uh, evaluating tool. So it can be, uh, may not be elevated. But the most important thing for you people to remember about CA and the other tumor markers is only good for follow up. आपने ट्यूमर रिमूव कर दिया है साल के बाद आपका स्टॉल ऑफ के लिए पेशेंट आया है आप सीईए करके देख लें अगर सीईए मोर देन नॉर्मल एलिवेटेड है तो दैट मींस के इसकी ट्यूमर रिकरेंस हो सकती है सो फॉर इन फॉलो अप सीईए इज इंपॉर्टेंट इन फॉलो अप रेक्टल कैंसर in addition to three generation chest CBC LFTs, uh, sound, uh, proctoscopy, colonoscopy, CT scan, all investigations, uh, preoperative staging, we have to the CT scan, and uh, MRI based. बड़ा ट्यूमर है आप पहले से इसको न्यू एडजेंट कीमो रेडियो थेरापी दे सकते बिफोर Sometimes they ask, what is neo -adjuvant? That means before surgery, okay? Chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Right. 
एंडोस्कोपिक अल्ट्रासाउंड स्कैन अपने अंदर ही उसके रेक्टम में एंडोस्कोपिक अल्ट्रासाउंड साफ लगा होता है वो कर लें मोस्ट एक्यूरेट टूल इन डिटर्मिन द ट्यूमर स्टेज ओके विद 67 टू 93% एक्यूरेसी T3 uh, T1 from T3 easily but Uh, it's difficult to differentiate in D2 and uh, D3. So, its uh, limitations are endoscopic ultrasound. The operator dependent has its experience as for uh, differentiating lymph nodes uh, from the blood vessels. For radiation values for neoadjuvant radiation, maybe it can be some radiation changes or ultrasound after filter any other system. अगर बिल्कुल बंद हुआ हुआ है तो यू कॉन्ट पास एन अल्ट्रासाउंड स्कैन को सो बट सुपीरियर टू सी टी और एम आर आई फॉर डेप्थ ऑफ ट्यूमर कहते हैं कि अगर आप पास कर लें एंडोस्कोपिक अल्ट्रासाउंड इज द मोस्ट एक्यूरेट वन इज सुपीरियर टू सी टी और एम आर आई एंड समाइम इफ यू डोंट गेट Enough information from the endoscopic ultrasound. You better get to uh, MRI uh, that the tumor. Okay. Now, lymph node assessment um, is, is more difficult. Uh, endoscopic ultrasound, 62 to 83%. CT scan, 35 to 73%. Actually. Endoscopic ultrasound, lymph node staging will be better. Uh, all these tests pick up size of the lymph nodes only for clearly but i am really malignant hai ye dikhai nahi hai 52 75% of the involved lymph nodes they appear normal and may not be fixed similarly and large lymph node may be inflammatory so cause negative view of lymph nodes more than 3 mm and high o equal Hypo acute, who is not hypo, not there. They are likely to have malignancy. So, uh, you can do FNA under endoscopic ultrasound guidance. You can say needle will be put there, or you can have sample this. Uh, the FNA can do fine needle aspiration. You can check it. Can do cytology. Can do. You can tell me if there are malignant cells or not. So that can give you. Uh, The CT scan of the abdomen pelvis is important for other organs involved. So, at the same time, you can locally tell me that the tumor is how it is in the site. But in the rest of the abdomen, the pelvis, the other organs, the CT scan is better. Now, look at these pictures. This is a, a virtual colonoscopy. So, you can tell me that it is polypoidal and it is a tumor. Inside the colon, if you look at this, you should know when you're doing surgery. On the right side, this is aorta, and this is a SMA. Okay, superior mesenteric artery, inferior mesenteric artery, and now you do right hemicolectomy, the left hemicolectomy, the sigmoid colectomy, anterior resection, and. Uh, Sometimes you do abdominal perineal resection if the tumor is very low. Okay. Right. The so different tiers of uh, lymph nodes. Uh, first tier of, of lymph node one is above on the colon itself. The epicolic, the other are paracolic. So they are very close. First tier. The second tier is intermediate nodes, and third tier is right at the uh, start of the mesenteric vessel in the midline uh, near the aorta. From there through the portal vein in that uh, region uh, to the portal uh, system. Uske saath saath vessels ke saath saath ye porta apertus pe jaate hain, porta apertus se liver. Okay, that's how it uh, spreads. Similarly, the lymphatic drainage is so upper upper. These are all upper are going. The as a mid zone, me, who are, these are also going. These are side going. 
but if it's below that uh, this lower zone, lower rectum, the inguinal gland may be done. Okay, if you see somebody with the uh, lymph nodes in the inguinal region, always check the lower rectum. Uh, what's the time now? Oh, that's all done. Time done. Huh? Okay. All right. Okay. I uh, hope to see you again sometime uh, during this month, or at least maybe the uh, college start or hopefully. Maybe next month. We have the HEC. According to HEC, 17th to start. That's all. So. Okay, good luck and uh, have a safe sleep. Okay, thank you. Bye bye.